Hi everybody, what's going on? You're watching The Sit Down, I'm DJ Sixsmith. Today I'm joined by Tracy Edwards, Alex Holmes, Maiden, coming to theaters today, Friday. And guys, it's gonna be something that people love because your story about the first all-female crew is remarkable. So how are you? Good to meet you. Good, thank you. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. So you guys happened to meet five years ago at an elementary school. You didn't want to go that day <laughs> to speak to his daughter's class. <laughs> Wind me back to that whole story. Oh, I just had a very long day and I was pretty much on my knees and, uh, <laughs> and I thought, no, it's just down the road. Uh, you know, you can't disappoint these very small children. And uh, so off I went and I uh, gave the talk and, uh, well, I'll let Alex over, take over from there. Yeah, what did you think when you, when you heard Tracy speak here? Well, uh, I, I knew straight away. I mean, I think anybody who meets Tracy sees she's got this kind of energy and determination. Uh, so she's a striking person. She stood up and uh, immediately these 11-year-old kids were kind of like, oh, who's this? You know, <laughs> uh, this is exciting. Uh, but as she told her story, I thought, oh, this is a film. This is definitely mm. a film. Uh, so much so that by the time she'd finished, I was convinced this must already have been made into oh, a wow. film. You know, it was kind of one of those, it's just too good a story yeah. to have not already been done. So actually afterwards I went up to Tracy and I said, uh, you know, has this ever been made into a film? And she said, no, well, but mm. you know, I've sometimes thought about whether it could be. Um, and actually at the time I was thinking about a, a, a dramatic film, mm. uh, you know, and I was thinking, okay, so we'll write a script and we'll cast it and what have you. And it was only when we talked a couple of days later that Tracy said, you do know that we had cameras on board the whole way <laughs> out. <laughs> and that was just like music to my ears because I, I, my, I started out as a documentary filmmaker mm. and it's really my first love. So the chance to, to make this as a documentary was just fantastic. Yeah, and the fact that you guys had the cameras on deck was just insane. So yeah. how did you even have the thought to bring that along? What kind of technology were you using at the time? Because this is the late 80s. Yeah, so we, we didn't actually think of taking cameras. The Whitbread uh, Race Committee mm -hmm. asked for volunteers amongst the fleet to take cameras. And of course, most of the guys were like, no, we're far too serious ocean racing <laughs> sailors to be filming. Um, and we went, we will, we'll, mm. we'll film. <laughs> So they gave us this camera, which was a... It's a, it's a it was an SVHS camera, so oh, wow. it's a very short-lived format. Yeah. But, you know, the camera itself is kind of, you know, like this. And, and, and Joe, who did a lot of the footing, is about the same size as Tracy. So oh, you wow. can imagine this great... Yeah, it's camera. a big old camera. Joe's yeah. shorter than yeah. me, yeah. I have yeah. to say. Yeah. That. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Get that in there, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and with all the waterproof stuff on the top right. of it. But what we did, which I think really was a very good thing, was we practiced before we mm. left. You know, I think the guys that took their cameras, they threw away the instructions, put the cameras on the boat, <laughs> <laughs> and waited till they them for the first time. How does this work? Um, but we went out sailing and we had an emergency on deck, which was all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. Joe came up with the camera and I went, you can put that down right now. <laughs> and she said, oh, this is a good point. What are we going to do when it gets really right, rough? Right. So we were the only boat who fixed a second camera onto the radar wow. mast uh, right at the aft end of the boat. So all that footage that you see, which makes you feel slightly queasy, yeah, which moves with the absolutely. boat, that's the camera. Wow, that's really yeah. savvy. Yeah. And you guys dealt with so many insane conditions. Just the fact that the footage was able to continue to roll is, is quite fascinating. Yeah, re remarkable. And when, when I started to see the footage, I couldn't believe what quality it was. You're right, absolutely. The, the, the stuff that comes in those big storms, those yeah. big seas, you know, that is just remarkable and, and, and shocking and really brings home uh, the intensity of the experience and the bravery of, of these Abs women. Absolutely. It's I mean, just extraordinary. The one, the one part with 20 below conditions, I mean, it's just insane yeah. what you guys yeah. are dealing with. It's, it's pretty brutal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously. But, right. but the other thing yeah. that was interesting about the footage was that, um, you know, you would look at some of the, you know, the guys eventually got their act together mm -hmm. and worked out how to switch the camera on. And, and when they started filming, you would get these, uh, you would get these kind of slightly stilted interviews, these stand-up interviews, yeah. and they'd say, oh, so the weather today is, you know, fairly stable <laughs> and we're at five degrees north. And uh, whereas actually what, what uh, Joe did, who's Tracy's childhood friend, who mm -hmm. was on, on the boat as well, was the cook and so took over the responsibility for filming. She kind of used the camera to actually get these fantastic portraits of mm. life on board, you know, mm. just filming just everyday stuff and also just filming these women in a really emotionally intelligent way so that you could actually start to appreciate their characters and understand what they were going through and what they were feeling. Uh, and it was, it was just a gift for a filmmaker. Yeah, it really gave a snapshot of what life was like mm. for you guys for all those, uh, all those days out there. So when you guys are making this film, it's, it's five years, what were the challenges that you faced along the way? Well, <laughs> the second question he asked me was, he said, that's fantastic, you have footage. He looked like a man who found gold. You know? <laughs> then he went, where's the footage? Mm. I went, I have absolutely no idea. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> we used to get into port and we'd hand, we had these big plastic boxes mm, you know, right. with the screw top and we'd just literally hand the footage over. And then we never really knew what happened to it after that. Yeah, so, th so there was a massive job of just going to just literally the four down. corners of the yeah. earth and tracking down this footage. 
and you know, often it had been copied and recopied and you know passed on, and and then the original tapes had been thrown away. So it was you know sometimes we'd find a clip in mm. you know two parts of a clip in one place and have to join them together mm. to see what the sequence was. So that was the first job, and and that took uh, took at least a couple of years really yeah. to pull all that footage in. The other thing was ironically one of the uh, remarkable things about Tracy's journey was just how much how difficult uh, uh, she. Uh, and her team found it to raise finance for their right. project, which yeah. you know to, uh, now seems like yeah, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> but back then, everybody was saying absolutely mm. not. We're not going to back this financially. Um, and funnily enough, it was a similar thing with the film. It took a, it took a long time to raise the money for the film. So I think those were our two biggest challenges. But mm. nothing compared to the challenges that Tracy faced. Mm. Well, yeah, you guys really faced a boys' club when it yeah. came to this world. So can you just describe how difficult it was? Because it took many, many months to finally get uh, that funding. Yeah. Well, sailing is very much a patriarchy. Mm -hmm. It is rooted, especially in the UK, not so much, funny enough, in, in other countries, but in the UK, it's really rooted in history. You know, it's, it's Nelson, and it's, uh, we're a maritime mm -hmm. nation, and we fought right. wars on water, right. you know, and a, we, we hear the word Nelson quite a lot of times when we change the watch system to different hours, um, and everyone went, but you can't do that. We've been doing it since, like that since Nelson's day, and we're like, yeah. Yeah, time to <laughs> change these. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a very um, it's a very old and archaic sort of thought process. And so you're not fighting individuals, which would be easy. You, you're fighting the system, if you like, and uh, which still exists today, I have to say, in the mm. UK. You know, we're still fighting our little battles, still trying to get girls onto the big uh, male right. racing boats. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, a step-by-step -step process. And I, I think we realized, well, it's not strictly true. I looked back afterwards and, and looked at the race and I thought we'd, we'd smashed the wall down, mm. you know, but there's just a little dent. Right, you know, but still a, a significant dent yeah, at the was. time. But like you said, yeah, just a little crack yeah. in that much larger wall. Yeah. Yeah. And even from a storytelling perspective, we go back to your childhood and we really find out just how you became who you are. So what was it like talking through that stuff for the first time in many years, and why was that important from a storytelling perspective? Well, it was, uh, I hadn't actually see, even seen some of that footage, oh, wow. because uh, my mum <laughs> my mum collected everything. Yeah. Um, so she collected all the footage of the race, all the news clips. Um, so when she died, I, I, you know, I was left with these five boxes full of videotapes and old Super 8s and Cine and all this sort of stuff. And I literally handed the <laughs> loss over to Alex. I went, fill your boots, you know, it was all there. Um, so it was interesting actually that I, I am quite an emotional person. Mm. I, I do tend to cry, you know, for lots of different reasons. But um, I think Alex evoked in all of us some sense of, I mean, he really took us back. It was like having yeah, therapy. Absolutely. I, you know, yeah, therapy on camera. Yeah, yeah, end of two days, I was just completely <laughs> wiped out. And I think I cried a number of times sort of during that process because it was really a, uh, he drew stuff out of us, I think, that some of us didn't even realize was there. Mm. And uh, what, what was that as, as, as to why it was important, I mean, one of the things that Tracy said to me early on about why she, you know, what she felt was important in, in her experience was that, um, and, and something that she said to, to the children the first evening I, I, I saw her speak was that, uh, you know, there's a very high expectation, as particularly on girls, that, that if they're going to achieve anything, they have to be kind of perfect. Mm. Uh, and actually, that's never the case. Right. None of us are perfect. Yeah, we all, we yeah. all have yeah. skills and talents and abilities, but we also have flaws and things that undermine us and things that hold us back. And so I really wanted to explore in the film uh, the way that you know Tracy wasn't the perfect individual. She wasn't born to do this. Right. Uh, she had to overcome her own challenges uh, and actually deal with things. And, and actually, with the help of her crew, you know, she mm. found the strength to sort of uh, face down her own demons. And so a lot of that early stuff in the, the film where we talk about Tracy's childhood and how difficult it was. I mean, you know, Tracy was, you know, uh, suspended from school so many times. Yeah, over 20 times, school, right? You know, before she finally got <laughs> kicked out, never took any exams. I yeah. mean, she was, a, she was a nightmare teenager, you know, to be honest. <laughs> you were a misfit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so it wasn't like, oh, well, this was always meant to be. You know, right. of course, she had, a, she had a gilded life and Tracy was going to step into this world of sailing. You know, Tracy come from, came from a really tough place. But in spite of that, she, 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 in the course of this, this process, dealt with all those challenges to her, you know, that she felt inside herself, as well as all the challenges from outside. And I yeah. think that's, that's a really essential part of the story. Definitely. I mean, I appreciated the vulnerability, just talking about losing your dad, mm. stuff with your stepfather. It really helped me understand why this was so important for you to do. Even like in the start of the film, you felt like you had to do this. 
So can you just unpack that a little bit more? Why did you feel like you really needed to get out there and make this happen? Well, I think, uh, to just go back to that time, um, I, when I got onto my first sailing yacht, um, if, if you'd asked me a few years ago, what is a sailing yacht? I just it's a place for rich people. <laughs> um, right. And then I discovered this whole world that existed um, that I didn't know about with all these really quite nutty, crazy people who none of us pretty much on, on any boats I sailed on initially had come up through dinghy or yacht club or anything like that. We just ended up on boats. Mm. And uh, most of us had realized, you know, that oh, this is where I need to be. This is it. I found it. So the progression through, up through the ranks, and then a little bit of racing and everything else, and even to the point you see that the 8990 race was still, we were still going from amateur to professional in sailing, mm -hmm. and it was still a place of pirates and gypsies and nomads <laughs> and crazies, you know, and and that really is what for me made that race. Um, so the 85, 86 race was even more so. Not very many big sponsors. Right. Um, being on Atlantic Privateer with these 17 pirates, I mean, just it was just changed my life. And uh, I mean, there were times I hated them and I wanted to kill them, <laughs> but uh, mostly it was great. And uh, then I knew I had to do the 89, 90 race because I'd, I'd experienced the race uh, as a cook, which the race was great, but I didn't like the cooking. Right. So to be a navigator, I, I knew it would take hundreds of years before I could ever, you know, sort of get on a boat as a navigator. So I thought, well, the world looks like that. I don't like the way the world looks. I, mm. I need to change my bit of it, which is what I did. So, I mean, it was initially quite a selfish reason to put the project <laughs> together because I wanted to navigate. Sure. And then when we came up against all this opposition, which I did find strange, people say, you know, well, weren't you surprised? Uh, well, I, I was a little bit surprised because I'd come from a world where men and women all mucked in together. And right. yeah, okay, it was difficult to get on private tip. Once I was on, it was fine. Um, so this this wall of, you know, sort of skepticism and, and not just, people wouldn't just go, we don't think you can do it, you know, and we, we think you might, you know, have problems. They'd go, you can't do it and you're going to die. Mm. It's like, oh, okay, that's like, fairly wow. final. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the other, my favorite coming from a man is women don't get on. Right. Really chauvinistic society yeah. that you're dealing with. Yeah. yeah. So it, it became then more than me just wanting to be a navigator. I had to do it because if I now failed after having announced it, the women that came after me would have a much worse job because I'd be like an albatross mm. around their necks. Yeah, no question. So when you think about this story, Alex, what fascinated you the most just from a filmmaking, storytelling perspective? Uh, I, I think it was, you know, Tracy's character is the really what it, you know, was at the heart of it, and you know, her determination and, and, and her grit to see it through in spite of all the opposition that she faced. You know, that to me struck me as a, as, as a, as a, as a, as a beautiful story yeah. about someone who followed their dream, and in spite of the fact that everybody told her that she couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't do this, that she went ahead and did it anyway. I thought that was a, a beautiful story. But there was something else that, that, that propelled me, which was, um, going right back to that first evening, I was really shocked to sit there and listen to this story, look at my daughter listening to this story, mm. and realize that even though Tracy had broken down all these barriers 25, 30 years ago, uh, my daughter was still going to face so many of them again mm. today yeah. in her life. And I, I, that, that really shocked me, that, that sudden realization that, my goodness, the world may have appeared to have changed on the surface, but deep down, so little has changed. And so it seemed to me not only relevant, but essential that we made this story in order to keep that conversation going, to kind of highlight the fact that actually the world isn't uh, you know, a, an equal playing field for, for men and women. Yeah, it's a really interesting thing because this was such a monumental achievement and you think, why haven't we advanced more? But then you start to realize the scope of things and it's important to just put this into context and realize that more still needs to be done. Oh yeah, yes. So Absolutely. this film will certainly help with that. And there were just so many different interesting parts. So like three days before, Joe breaks a wrist, like you guys are going through all that crap. You finally get out there. You finish in third on the first leg, which would have been impressive from the outside. But you guys were pissed about it. Yeah, we were not happy. <laughs> no, so take me back to that moment there. Well, we, we lived in this sort of alter universe where we had these two parallel things going on. We wanted to win. Mm -hmm. There is no point in spending nine months being <laughs> wet, cold, miserable, yeah. unless you're going to win. Right, right. And everyone else is like, oh, they just want to get around, you know, get around in one piece. And Gary Jobson talking over the top one of the pieces uh, to camera, which he now is so embarrassed about. Oh, here's the girls just just trying to get around, doing their best. Yeah, that's you know. ridiculous. I know. Like, Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. So we 
anything we did, quite frankly, would have been uh, an accomplishment, a, a, an accomplishment yeah, absolutely. to everyone else. But of course, to us, we had failed. Mm. We had failed to win our first leg. So we had this weird sort of party on the dock with us sort of being all miserable and, and everyone else going, you're alive, oh, <laughs> this is amazing, you know. Um, so anything we'd done after that, as, you know, would have been, again, another uh, um, bonus. The second, when we started on the second yeah. leg, I mean, we, I can't actually tell you how determined we were. There was something, there was a fire in our mm. bellies, you know, to when we started that leg. And of course, then coming first into Australia, yeah. we, think, we were thinking, this is where we want to be. Absolutely, right, yeah, this, this is, is where you expected to be. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone else, the collective jaws of the world just dropped. I mean, literally, people in Salem World just went, what the hell just happened? They, they <laughs> couldn't believe what was happening. <laughs> And but I, but I think that's actually quite a. I think that's part of the the, the, the patriarchy that, yeah. that 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 people didn't want to see you as as sports people. You know, the, the, the essential element of being a sports person is you want to win. Right. You're only in it if you want to win it. You know, that's that's your whole goal. That's what you put all yeah. that training in, mm -hmm. all that effort, all that commitment. Well, you know, whatever your sport, and and yet that's something that seemed perfectly legitimate for men to want to do, but nobody seems to think that women <laughs> want to do that too. Right. And it's just insane, because of course they do. Yeah, it's completely, you know, yes. all sports women want Absolutely. to win. That's what they're there for. Yeah. Um, and they just couldn't see that in relation no. to the, the crew of Maiden. Yeah, it's all about looking beyond gender, not just focusing mm. on these are women, but these are sports people, these are yeah. athletes, yeah. these are people competing, and of course yeah. they want to win. Yeah. And, and that's, that's why they, they were never asked the questions about mm. tactics right. and, and, and the race and strategy mm. and all that kind of stuff. They would be asked just about how were you getting on, you right. know, and, and what was your personal, how were you feeling yeah. about it. And you yeah. guys knew everything. You <laughs> built that boat from scraps. I mean, that boat was not in great shape when you, when you got it. <laughs> we see that in the film. It was really a fixer-upper. Yeah, that was funny was. when she arrived back in on the cargo ship and they oh. lifted her off with a crane and put her on the dock and everyone just went, that's not it, is it? Is, is, is there something else on the ship that's being offloaded? And I went, no, 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 this is, you know, this is our new boat. And, uh, but the great, th you know, what was a disadvantage mm -hmm. became such an advantage yeah. for us because all that time together, living in the same house, you know, living in the crew house, working on the boat, and I mean, these were women who, this is why they're so extraordinary. When they joined, I didn't have a, a proper project with wages mm -hmm. and money, and you know, I mean, I, I got them a crew house and I, I fed them occasionally. Right. That's all you could really do uh, at that's that That's all point. I could yeah. do, you know, they didn't get a proper wage, and then when we got sponsorship, yes, they did, but again, that was intermittent, you know, sorry, the money's for the boat, mm. you, you may get some money right. at some <laughs> if point. If we have anything left. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they, they stuck with it, and I'm often asked, how did you choose the crew? Well, they actually kind of chose themselves, really, because right. they were the ones that, <laughs> that were left. At yeah, the, the, the know, ones that survivors. Yeah. The, yeah. I mean, I knew we needed an electrician and engineer, sure. so I make all these jobs, and I, I, so I filled them. People came and went. But when we crossed the start line, we'd pretty much, a lot of us been together for two years, and we'd been through all this rebuilding the boat and everything else, so we were probably the most determined crew on the start line. Mm. I mean, you've got these other boats, you know, they're, they're shiny, they're new, right. you know, and some guys had literally stepped on the day before. Wow. You know, oh, here's to join the boat, you know, and off they go. And so how do you have that, the passion that we right. had? Right, there's not that know? extra drive like you yeah, guys had. Yeah, absolutely. And then, of course, when everything went horribly wrong, we knew the boat inside out, and we could take right. her apart at sea and put her back together again. Yeah, and you guys faced a lot of challenges out there. Mm. So what was the greatest challenge, would you say? Oh, nearly sinking going around Cape Horn for me was the, um, the did only you think moment. any point did you think you would not make mm, it out? That was the only moment mm. that any of us thought, this is a bit interesting. Right, this could yeah, be the end. Okay, yeah. um, this is, and it was the only time I ever really thought about how long it would take to get the life rafts out mm. of the, because um, this isn't the days for health and safety. Right. And the, the life rafts were locked in lockers oh on the gosh. deck. Not only that, but the, the grinders that you see yeah. on the deck, which is how you do the winches, you would have had to get a tool to take the grinder handle off before unlocking the locker, oh opening gosh. up and getting, you'd die by then, you know, the yeah. boat would have been, you know, at the bottom of the ocean, so uh, just crazy stuff. Wow. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot to unpack there in terms of making this film, so when you're going through that part, how are you thinking about bringing this story together, you know, what were some of the challenges for you with that? Well, the challenge was, it's a, it's a, it's a nine month race. Right. Um, uh, How do I put this into uh, an yeah, hour exa and a half? Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, and the answer is at first you don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think the first cut that we had was five hours long, oh, something wow. like that. And, and, and I'm talking, that's not just an assembly, that is a cut, that right. is an attempt to tell the story. <laughs> and it took five yeah, hours. You're going to have to trim this down a little bit. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, that's not for everyone, do you? Yeah. <laughs> that's only for the real enthusiasts. Right. <laughs> yeah, <yeah. laughs> uh, um, 
But uh, you know that that is the process, and you just slowly have to whittle it down, decide what's important, what are the key beats, what are the key elements, what are the the things that really get to the heart of the experience and what they achieved, mm. um, and then just keep compressing. And I had a fantastic editor. I mean, Katie Breyer, who who cut the film uh, for me, was just a genius, uh, and she had such again such emotional empathy with with the crew and with their experience and what they went through. And you know, the film is imbued with all her skill and all her mm. talent. Um, you know, it, w it was so much more than a, than, a, than a technical exercise cutting that film. It was just a, a, an expression of, of her appreciation of these characters as well. And you know, I think that in a way, I, I think that that's something either that Tracy and I have in common, if, I, if I'm being kind to myself, <laughs> it, or something that I learned from Tracy yeah. is that the most important thing is the people you put around you. So mm. oh, yeah. it's all about just getting a great team uh, and surrounding yourself with great people. Mm. So my producer, uh, Victoria, my, my uh, you know, uh, associate producer, Sam, and, and Katie were just absolutely fantastic. Mm. And you know, we just worked together to kind of bring it down and down and down until we felt it was the, the best expression of the story. And then taking my you know, uh, courage <laughs> in, my, in my hand, <laughs> I showed it to Tracy and the crew. And that was a, a, a it was a, 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 a nerve wracking man. moment. I'm sure it was. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but actually turned out great. So. Yeah. Yeah. We loved it. What was it like when you guys watched it the first time? It's so surreal. Yeah. Um, I'd seen little bits and pieces because uh -huh. uh, Alexa said, you know, is, is this technically right? And am I saying the right thing here and everything else? So I knew little bits and pieces, but I hadn't really seen the whole finished thing. And we saw it all together, uh, all of the crew <coughs> at BAFTA. Actually, a year ago today. Wow, yeah. yeah. that's right. Indeed, it was a year ago. A year ago, ago that's today. Amazing. Exactly. That's yeah. amazing. That's really I've amazing. I just realized that. So <laughs> a year ago today, all of the crew were back together again for the first time in quite a long time. How long we, are we talking? Well, we would have these little reunions mm -hmm. when any of us could kind of be in the same country at the same time, right. but that's pretty much impossible. <laughs> yeah. But Alex managed to get 11 of us out of the 12. Wow. Michelle is always... We've never, uh, we haven't actually seen Michelle for 30 years. She's just sailing somewhere. We gotta lock down Michelle. We, yeah. I mean, we come assume on. She's, <laughs> she's, 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 she's on a boat. No news is good news or anything. Remote place, yeah. <laughs> Um, we all sat down and watched it, and uh, I, I think we probably all drew, well, we all drew very similar conclusions. Um, and Nancy, for one, said, oh, my God, that's, that wasn't me. That's not me. And mm. I went, I don't think that's me either. <laughs> this is some <laughs> random person they found. Um, I remember myself so differently. Really? So differently. How so? Well, I thought I was a bit of an idiot, um, <laughs> you know, a bit of a twit, yeah. kind of stumbling from one nightmare to the next. No, you had your stuff together on there. Things, uh, but I did watch it. Yeah. You're actually quite together. I mean, that's <laughs> you it. really were. And the, yeah. there's one thing where I said something where I thought, that was actually quite profound. I don't remember <laughs> saying anything <laughs> profound ever. You know? It's like, all right, that was cool. So, there we go. But what was really funny was, as I was watching it, I knew I was looking beyond my eyes and I knew what was going on inside my head at that time. Mm. That was very strange. And I, I couldn't believe how much I was managing to cover it up. Because you know the, the earlier interviews, I was terrified, yeah. utterly terrified. I had no media training. Howard just went, do this interview, stick me there, and, and you know, and I just so to know how to see how calm I looked, and to know the panic and sheer terror that was going on underneath was just so weird. Mm, I'm yeah. sure it was. So when people check this film out, there's a lot to talk about. What should the lasting legacy of the film be, and the story of you and your crew? Well, I hope what people walk away with is the, uh, well, I, I, I know they do, having spoken to people. One of my favorite tweets after one of the screenings was a woman went, I bounced out of the cinema thinking I've got to sail around the world. And then I remembered I can't sail, I get seasick, and I hate water. It's like, <laughs> so That's good. people do leave with this. I mean, people leave crying. Yeah. Um, I've seen a grown man walk out of the cinema going, thank God it was dark in there. Wow. Um, and people saying, oh, God, I feel like I can do anything. And so hopefully uh, they will leave with a sense of, you know, being able to commit to something and that anyone really can do anything because if I can do that you know from from my humble beginnings then um, and I, I also want girls to watch it and and know that they don't have to be perfect mm. that they can be all s a myriad of things and and still go for their dream and work hard for their goals how about you Alex uh, well, I think, uh, you know, fortunately, Tracy and I have the same ambition for the film, which is, you know, I want it to, to inspire people. I want it to make them feel that, like, actually, the most important thing is to get out the door, take the first step towards mm. their goal, because something mm. interesting will happen. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you know, it may not be, you may not achieve what you set out to achieve, 
but something good will happen if you try. If you don't do anything, if you stay at home, if you, if you don't take that first step, nothing, nothing good happens. is going to happen. <laughs> you know? Got to put yourself in the game, right? Exactly. Got to put yourself in the game. And you know, that's what Tracy is an exemplar of, 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 of pursuing that dream and pursuing it with guts and determination. Uh, and achieving something amazing as a result. Well said. Well, guys, congratulations. Thank Tracy, you so nice much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Alex, Thank you. Thanks a lot. Nice to meet you. Made in Friday in New York and LA, and then rolling out after that, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, good deal. Country. All right, everybody. See you next time. You're on the sit down.